Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to start, well we're just going to do this one problem actually in this video because it's a bit of a doozy. So this is a four part, this is number four in the second session of the practice test that was given up to the MCAS. Uh, so this is a data set, right? So they're going to give us information here, they give us ten numbers and they go ahead and tell us that a coach recorded the number of goals scored by a soccer team in each of his ten last games, well ten goals in a game, that's a, I guess they didn't use the mercy rule on that one. So it goes along to ask us some questions. Now the first thing before I say anything is for this problem, uh, you really would want to use scrap paper with a problem like this. So make sure when you take the MCAS you're using the scrap paper to, to really make your life easy. To attempt to calculate this without writing anything down is a surefire recipe for disaster. You want to write these numbers in order, okay? You want to do that. So you'd want to use your scrap paper here when you're working on this problem. So the first thing we do, use scrap paper. Don't try to do this without writing these numbers down. If you try to do that, I guarantee you're gonna, you're just increasing the likelihood of you making a mistake. So we're gonna put these in order from lowest to highest. So we're gonna go with one and one. And you again, you should be following along in the with the packet I gave you. There's also a link in the video description. You should be, look at this digitally, like while we're doing this. Try this. You should have already tried this problem, obviously. And then this should be you should be watching this after you've tried it. But if you're just going it with me, I guess, make sure you're looking at it digitally because you'll see why this would not be something you want to do without scrap paper. All right. So two and two and two. Okay, how many threes are there? One, two. There's three there and there's a three there. No fours, so we got two fives. Then we have ten. Okay. So this is ten games, so let's make sure we have ten numbers here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, we're missing one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we're totally missing one. Uh, let's go back and do that again. So one, one. I forgot a two. Yep, I didn't write a third two, that's why. So that's why we always count after we do it to make sure we have ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, now we're good. Okay. So it's asking us to find the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. So medians actually is Q2. So Q1, Q2, Q3. So if you've done box whiskers, which all of you should have, uh, this should ring a bell. If it, you don't remember it, it's okay, I forgive you. Don't blame you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the median will be the middle number. So because we have an even number of, of entry points here, data points, it's going to be in between the two of them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's in between those two. That's where the Q2 is going to be, or the median. And it's going to be halfway between 2 and 3, which in this case would be 2.5. Okay, that's our median. And the Q1 would be the, the middle point here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's the middle point right there. That's our Q1. Q1 is 2. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our Q3 is 5. OK. There we go. What is the interquartile range of the data? Show sure, explain it, I guess. So IQR is uh, the range of the, of the quartile. So it's Q3 minus Q1. That's how we calculate that. Okay. And again, this is something they expect you to remember. So you saw this once in geometry, like for maybe a day, and they want you to remember this. So this is why it's really important that we go over this together and you're taking time to review this. Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit more. There we go. So Q3 is going to be 5 minus Q1 minus 2. Our IQR is 3. And this would be enough work to show you this. So quartile 3 minus quartile 1. Equals IQR, and there we go. Okay. Here they tell us that the value 10 is an outlier. Explain how this outlier affects the distribution of the data. So um, outliers, oops, oh, why can't I write the letter O? <laughs> outliers, there we go. Outliers can skew the data. and dramatically affect the mean. So, you know, think of this. So, if you have a set of, just as an example, let's say we have like 2, 5, 7, 
8, right? And I replace 8. Let's say I replace 8 with like 2, 5, 7, 94, right? This mean, the mean from here to here will dramatically change. Just an example, I'll show you this. So 8 plus 5, 7 is 15, plus 5 is 20, 22. So 22 divided by 4. Let's figure out what that is. Can you see this? Make sure. Here we go. 22 divided by 4 is 5.5. Okay. Now let's do this one. So 2 plus 5 plus 7 plus 94. Divide that by 4. So as you can see, it's 108. It's 27. It's a pretty dramatic jump, right? So outliers can really dramatically change the way our mean looks. So it can, it can really change the way the data is, is viewed, uh, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah. So you really got to keep an eye out for outliers. You can calculate an outlier by taking the IQR, multiplying it by a half, and then subtracting it from the Q1 or adding it to the Q3. But it's not asking us for that. It's just showing us how outliers can affect the data. Okay. And then the last part, <clears throat> if the value 10 and the data got replaced by the mode, how much would the mean change? So let's we can actually calculate that. So the mean... We need to know what the mean is, and we need to know what the mode is. So the mode is the most, the number that, that the data entry point that occurs the most, so most often occurring number. Occurring. And the mean is just a fancy way of saying the average. So in order to get this part right, you need to know what both these are. So let's go ahead and calculate the mean for the, the original set of data. So the original set of data is 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 5, 5, 10. So you'd add these all together. You'd, you'd put that in the entry in the um, the box for the problem, and you find that's 31. You then divide that by 10 because you that's how many data points there are, and it's going to be 3 and 1 tenth. So that would be the mean of the original data set. Now let's replace um, 10 with the mode. So the mode is the number that happens the most, which in this case is 2. So we'd be replacing this 10 with a 2. So we'd have a fourth two, fourth two. So 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2. So now 10 has gone. And 3, 5, 5. Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Mm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. What am I doing here? What's happening here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Totally screwed that up. Hold on a second here. So... Again, it's a good thing I, I counted here because I forgot the extra three. So let's try that again. So one, one, two, two, two. Then there's two threes. Five, five, ten. Okay. Again, that is why we always want to make sure we count when we do this. There's ten of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, this time. Good. All right. So 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5 plus 10. And that gives us 34. Let's add that again just to make sure we didn't make a mistake. Plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5 plus 10. Okay, 34. Okay, cool. We divide this by 10 because that's how many points there are. And we get 3 and 4 tenths. That's the mean of the original data set. Now the new mean, we're going to replace the uh, 10 with a 2. So we're going to have 1, 1, 4 2s, and then 2 3s, and 2 5s. Okay, so let's add that up. We're going to have 1 plus 1. Can you see that? Oh, there you go. And it's 4 2s this time. Two threes, two fives. So we have 26. So it went down. Let's count that again just to be safe. One, two, 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 three, three, five, five. Okay. Yep. Divide that by 10. 26 divided by 10. And that's going to be 2 and 6 tenths. So. The new mean would be, what, 8 tenths less, 8 tenths smaller, yeah? So you'd say the mean would decrease 
by 8 tenths. And you can show this work here. Okay. So, um, good news is this problem was not scored as part of the practice test. Um, but it is showing us that we're being expected to remember a few things. We're being expected to remember how to calculate the IQR, how to find the Q1, the Q2, and the Q3. Uh, we need to know what median is. Uh, we need to understand how uh, outliers work and what they mean. And we also need to understand what a mode is and how a mean is calculated. Okay, so it's a fairly it's a fairly good amount of information for one problem. So hopefully this clarifies it. Let me know if you have any questions, guys. Thanks.